it looks like uh or the bottom of the hour but we are at the top of the hour and as i mentioned before we do have jeremiah dickerson and his uncle patrick dickerson here from team global select and if you guys missed the story jeremiah other than a different look from the last time that we saw you but you talk about someone with a story to tell just so you can hear in, in a quick scenario before he tells us the more exciting news that he's been going on because i listen i've been following him i've been watching the growth i've been watching what he's been doing on the court he sends me videos it's, it if this guy doesn't make it to the pros he doesn't have to worry about it because the story that he has going to share it's like making it to the pros and then some and thanks to fam with his uncle it listen there's nothing but going up so first of all gentlemen first of all jeremiah and patrick thank you both for joining me here on martinez and company thank you for having us you're welcome jeremiah uh, i'm assuming you must be on campus because it looks like you have that whole campus background so you must be in your dorm room yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right ryan knows about that stuff from back in the day except for ryan's look more like a, a small penthouse his was was set up completely different i don't know what it was he actually had bricks he didn't have the regular dorm room cinder blocks that we always see in the in the very old school ways mm -hmm. but listen jeremiah the last time you were on we were we were on on broad street south and you shared your story about what you guys had to overcome as a team as players as individuals and athletes it wasn't the most thrilling story you probably ever want to tell in your lifetime but because of that things have moved up things have moved forward and you're doing bigger and better things so to kind of fill in everyone here what was what led you to where you are but more importantly the story that you can share as, as quickly as you possibly can what ended up happening to get you to where you are now uh yes sir um mostly god um just removing me from that situation and placing me in a different avenue where i'm at now at the school i'm at now where I feel more at home. Uh, people around me are giving me better energy. The coaches, they're more like a family from what I was dealing with before and uh, just welcoming. Uh, that's what I've always wanted. So I just thank God for all he's done. Uh, lessons through certain to be able to get me through certain situations. Now, let's, and, and again, because you've talked about it before where it could have been a different route, right? Everybody knows it's so easy. And, and Patrick, you know this as well. One is as men, we get fueled right and, and that fuel gets added by what by a fire and all it takes is that one match to ignite it and make it blow up but what we found the same way like jeremiah found when he was telling us about the story originally was could he have gone the route that we've seen many things in in tv in the news when people lose their cool that it, it could have been name calling uh all kinds of stuff to end up happening but you and Jeremiah both end up taking a whole different route that now not only again has led Jeremiah to a much better university, but then you guys decided to team up to, well, I'm not even going to tell a story. Patrick, you tell a story of where you guys are now. Well, um, I've had the fortunate, um, just the, the time spending with, the, with Jeremiah has been amazing and what his, what his desire is outside of what he's doing for himself in basketball, Jeremiah has a, a unique heart and he really thrives to help other people. And um, because of his journey through the basketball, um, his experience that he's had, um, especially with AAU and how that has shaped him as a person, um, he's decided that that is something that he wants to give back. Um, and we're in the process of starting um, his AAU uh, Team Global Select, and we're getting all of the um, the business things in line right now. Jeremiah set his target date for actually um, launch of next year, and I'm excited uh, to be a part of that with him. Um, we're we're lining up everything. Um, you know, just making sure we're checking everything, crossing um, all the T's and dotting all the I's because again, when you're doing something like this, it's important to make sure you have everything in place. And so we're just trying to go through every single scenario to make sure that when it comes time to actually launch it, that we have everything solid and there are no hiccups or anything else. So we're gonna test launch everything. Um, we've already got the website up. 
we're not launching it yet, of course, but we want to run our testing of it. Um, and we're going to do that with every part of the process from the coaching to um, all of the paperwork, making sure that everything is in place. Um, so our my goal, what I'm doing is basically Jeremiah is giving me what he wants to do and I'm helping him get there with anything I can. That's that's my purpose in this process. That's okay though, but it's a good purpose because again, you guys are you guys are moving mountains, right? Whether you know it or not, Jeremiah especially because his story has been shared so much and people have gone back and watched the replay and he heard it because again, it, it could have been handled so many different ways and now becoming literally now an owner of a team, it's different because your image now follows you. So if it would have gone a whole different route, then people wouldn't have taken yourself and Jeremiah seriously because they'd be like, oh no, that's the kid who mouths off and said this, that, and the other without actually knowing the story behind the story. Because remember, there's always three sides to every story, right? Your side, their side, and then there's the truth. And usually the truth always comes out. It's always, you know, back, so in our generation, we've always heard our grandparents say, you know, whatever you, you do in the dark, right, comes to light. And, and people, I can't tell how many people probably are still in the closet because they're hoping that light never turns on because they've done stuff that eventually will come to the light. But you guys handle it so well. And now being, again, an ownership is going to come. Jeremiah, you being so young. I mean, for those who don't know, so Jeremiah just turned 17 not too long ago. Of course, I'm kidding because he's older than that. But Jeremiah being so young, having young team market owners, it's different because we don't see today's youth as much making that kind of movement. And Jeremiah's story is where he just took something again from a negative has turned into a super positive so much that if you guys uh see in my hand here there's an envelope and right back here is a check now jeremiah and patrick were so nice they sent me a check for one and a half million dollars to be the broadcaster next year listen I, i'm i was surprised i was shocked just as much you guys are but <laughs> listen no i'm kidding i you know as always i like to make jokes here but it's just it's amazing from just from what i heard from you jeremiah and you, and you and i have remained in contact ever since the story broke out and as we told everyone and just seeing this developmental growth, to me, I'm just beyond impressed because you know the direction that you want to go. Your family was so nice the day that you are you were in North Carolina, North Carolina, if I remember correctly, when you told the story. And the family was so cool where they just wanted to hear what was going on. I was more intrigued than what the family was. And again, because it's you when you tell a story, people are probably gonna say, that's not true but because you guys are doing what you're doing here soon with your team come next year i mean that's stories are gonna be told for ages and then when you get ready to have a family just take everything slow don't jump to it you know there's time there's plenty of people out there focus upon what you want to do and then make that you know make that your dream that everyone will talk about but the the other thing too and i don't think i've asked you yet too jeremiah as you continue to play and and you're hoping to to make it to the pros or possibly make it over to the basketball league which will help you to get to that next level what's your how are you going to balance the both because you do have your career your athletic career and now you're also going to have your business career at the same time Yes, sir. I've actually had a lot of thought about that. Um, I know once I'm in season, it'll probably be a little bit more difficult, but I, I know during the season I'll do as best as I can to help out with all I can. And I'm just thankful for my uncle because he's like the other mind. It's like we working both together. So when I'm overseas or playing or over here playing, uh, he'll be able to help. And of course, in the off season, I'm back full time. I'm giving everything I got and anything the business needs, I'm there. So. I know off season will definitely be beneficial for me. So that's uh, what my objective on mine has been with thinking about things like that. Now, you know, Pat, as you're helping out your nephew, right? And, it, and it's, again, we, we try to keep things in the family as much as we possibly can without having any kind of animosity or anything else. It's now become somewhat of a heavy weight, right? That has to be placed on your shoulder because now you have to make these contacts. You have to network with different people. You have to figure out what's going to be the next goal. You know, as far as the radio side, you guys got nothing to worry about because I have my side of the house. So if you guys need, you know, radio airtime, that's what my side of the house provides on Sports Radio 12.9. So that part, you guys are covered. So you don't have to worry about that because, well, except for Ryan. Every once in a while, I might have him chime in, you know, here and there. He'll give us his different take and different angle. But he's a KC fan. So Zayn, he disappeared. So that's how much of an angle he ends up giving me here. <laughs> but he's probably just resetting stuff there. But no, you know, it, at least on the sports radio side, you guys have nothing to worry about because we'll put the word out the minute that everything starts going into place. But as far as the network, because, you know, the same way you have to find sponsorships. I asked Sean Knapp as well from the Orlando Predators, who was on with me earlier, the GM. 
it's hard to be owner, executive, GM. Uh, you also are looking at at the fan perspective, merchandising. So there's a lot. And even though Jeremiah, of course, is helping as well, but because his studies are priority, we all hope so, so he can continue moving up to that next level. It's just, it's a lot that weighs on you. So at the end of the day, when you know that it's like, okay, it's that woosa time. I got to relax. I got to do me. What's something that you can take away that you can share with people who are starting, just starting a business up without driving themselves too crazy? Jeremiah. Yes, sir. I think one of the two. <laughs> we hear you. We just can't see you. Uh, he's almost there. He'll probably exit out and come back. But so Patrick went until Jeremiah comes back. So what do you do to, at, at the end of the day when you know it's time just to shut off the business and to be back with family? What's something that'll get you finally like calm down and say, okay, tomorrow's another day, but right now I'm just going to take care of me? Well, one of the one of the main things that I think that we are really focused on is building the business correctly from the beginning. So I think that if we, um, in uh, the question you asked Jeremiah in regards to his studies and his career outside of what he's doing for his business, um, we went over a timeline to make sure that we had the time to actually put into what we're doing prior to this actually starting so that we have a team in place and our goal is to have so right now it's it's a lot of grinding right now um, for the business in the, and that's required in order for us to get everything in place but once we have everything in place we want to have it as a system so you, you know as a system everything is already it's organized it's it's correct and we want to make sure that we're when i was talking about crossing every t and dot and every i we want to make sure that it's set up so that if jeremiah is away the function of the business will still remain because the team is in place and they've been trained properly and they know exactly what to do so our goal is to make sure that right now while we have the opportunity Line, put in all the time and energy we need to to structure everything correctly from the beginning so that when time is needed for spending time with family or on the other side of Jeremiah with his career he'll still be able to balance that because we'll have the structure completely where it needs to be at so I would just tell in, in terms of your question my response would be to make sure that you're doing everything appropriately so that when you're done you know you have a system in place so that if you're sick or if you can't do it or if you want to spend time with family you can walk away and know that you have a team in place that can pick up the slack while you're while you're away for that time no jeremiah as far as the team because i we know that your uncle's a big a big portion of uh, this future growth with the company are there other family members involved as well to make sure that everyone's helping one another out to get it to that that level so you guys when you get ready to launch everything come next year everybody knows exactly what the role is uh yes sir uh definitely my father um he's actually that's my uncle's brother so he's another big piece that is helping us as well to make sure that we have everybody on track he's always endorsing whatever we're doing so uh he's another big piece to our addition of our team so i think with him it's gonna bring so much work workload for us that'll be easier and it makes our life so much easier as well so we are really appreciate him I would bet now you guys you say that's your uncle the same way now it's your brother Patrick but one thing is I want to find out the fountain of youth that when it comes because you guys can actually pass for brothers other than just you know that being your nephew or an uncle but you know, a lot of that too comes because we try to keep as low stress as we can in our lives you know it's a different story when you live up north like the way I, I, I did where Ryan still lives up north it's different because before moving down here to Florida, I had aged by 90 years. And then when I came here, because it's it tends to be a little bit slower, but now everybody's moving down here, so it's picking up on the pace. But we, we try to do stuff in our everyday life so we don't look like we age. But again, when you become owners, which you guys will both find out, that aging process might pick up just a little bit more. Because it's, again, it's just the stress of things. Did the checks go out on time? You know, did we did we get everybody fed? You know, or did the team has everything that they have? It's just, it's a lot to take on. But I know as you guys are now dealing with it, I'm pretty sure it has its fun moments as well because for every little milestone and every little step you guys take, right? It's something new that you can kind of check off the list and say, I got this covered. So 
you guys being family, once again, Jeremiah being in college, and he knows the direction where he's going, are there people that are maybe just a little bit envious of what you guys have put together? You know, honestly, I don't tend to focus on that if they are. I, I, I would hope that they are because the, the goal is, you know, you have someone who is um, and yes, he's my nephew, but I don't um, I'm not even looking at him in that perspective when it comes to the business. Um, I look at him as, you know, this is this is a business that he wanted to do. And so I take it very seriously for him. Um, his, his mind is incredible. Jeremiah is um, extremely intelligent and very poised for his age to be so young, but have such an old soul. Um, I'm sure there are people who, you know, especially with Jeremiah being as young as he is and doing the things that he's doing, may have a little bit of envy there. But if you know Jeremiah, you also know that his goal is only to help other people. That mm -hmm. that That's what drives him um, in so many ways. And to be a part of that is huge. I, um, I think a lot of times when you have young people who are trying to do something incredible with their lives and they have these these, these big dreams and um, so many people can't help to see that dream through. You know, it's, it's a lot of times it's just a discussion or a conversation. Um, where I come in, like I told you with Jeremiah, is, is, is to help push that through. And I think that if there are people who are envious, what they'll understand at the end of this is that Jeremiah is trying to build something to help many people out. That is that is the that is what his goal is, and and so he invites everyone who has a serious mindset to be a part of it, and so there's no need for anyone to be envious. Come join, help out, and and there's always something that everyone can do. Right. Well, speaking of, there's there's two things here. One is you just brought up a point where I was going to ask as well is that you know how can people just end up helping you guys out? But also before you get to that, Jeremiah, your prediction. And, and I know that the, the team's not put together yet. You know, we're still getting the key pieces, the key pieces into place. How do you feel what the success that you're about to bring to the AAU? How do you feel your team in the division that you're going to end up being in? How well do you believe your team could end up doing just within the first year? We're not even go the first five years, just that first initial inaugural year. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, for the first year, it's just going to be growth. Um, I think I just want to see them grow and just for them to push themselves on and off the court. Um, we're going to teach them things where it's going to be life skills and basketball skills that they probably have never received before. And we want to dive into the game with them on and off the floor that usually AAU programs don't usually do. So I think that's our biggest factor. And uh, we're going to use the first year as just like the... Uh, the projection like oh where we can be in the next five years uh this is okay we know what we're gonna do from this point and we know what we can do from five years from now um so it's just gonna be a learning experience for the first year and i'm just really excited about it to see the kids have fun um learning growing uh getting them into programs if they're able to play if they're not able to play uh, we're just going to be happy to see them doing things at the next level and even life skills if they can't go to college or they have other aspirations of just being a barber, other things like that with the keynote speakers we bring in. That just brings success on us as well. So that's what we mainly look forward to as well. So, yes. And it, it's a funny question, right? Because it it's when you go to an interview. It's I think the, the toughest part is they always they have that one person. It'd be like you and I, Patrick, right? We have we bring somebody in and we say, okay, you know, what can you do for the success of this team? And then the magical question always is, where do you see yourself in five years? And to me, it's always like one of those trick questions because I, I know almost every company is out there scripted because they want to see what you have planned. I think only one time. And it was because the way the interview was, it was such a weird vibe that I didn't know if the guy was trying to talk to me or if he wanted to kind of scold me because he was having a bad day. So when he asked me the question, he kind of looked over to his right and looked back at me. I said, well, I guess I'll be in your spot in five years, won't I? And the guy didn't know what to do. He just looked at me like, did he just say he was going to take my spot? But after that, he like bursted into laughter because it was one of those things like he kind of felt in the moment that he realized that the, the question didn't come across the way it should have. So with you guys and Jeremiah just touched upon, you know, the five year growth of the company and the organization, going back to where people can turn around now and ask you guys what can they possibly do to help 
where could people reach you guys to either, you know, it could be for sponsorship. It could be just some networking where someone may know somebody to make the process easier for you guys. So how can they get a hold of you guys to make the process just a little bit better for you? Right now, Jeremiah is doing most of the um, receiving of the information and more or less distributing it out to me at the moment. Um, what we have just done is, of course, we've got our server set up. So in the very near future, probably within the next week or two, we're going to have our email portal set up um, so that people can actually access it from there. Um, that'll be displayed on the website itself. What I would tell everyone right now is just go to teamglobalselect.com. It is not up and it's, it's just it's um, not up yet at this moment, but we're going to have information that's going to be displayed on it within the next week or two um, that people can still click on the link to get to at least an email. And, um, and then we're going to also be putting some other information on there. Um, we're going to have um, basically when with, with the process that we're doing me and Jeremiah, we meet on a weekly basis and we go over the you know our objectives for the following week we, we we break it into small pieces because there's so many pieces as you said earlier it is a lot to take on and i'm i am very excited that jeremiah didn't put a an unrealistic timeline on it um we have been already in process of doing this right now for about six months six or seven months and so we have another you know good period of time left to finish up with it, whatever is left but yeah, right now I would tell everyone to go to teamglobalselect.com and um, we're going to have an info page up there within the next week or so that they can actually just send their information and Jeremiah will be checking that for right now. And um, as more information comes out, we'll, we'll um, distribute that accordingly. But yes, we would love to have anyone who's interested in helping, anyone interested in sponsoring. Nothing is too small. Um, our goal is to really make this happen. When you asked about year one, um, I always tell Jeremiah something when he's out there court, and I think this applies to life. If anything you're doing, if you're giving your best at it, you win. You know, everyone a lot of times think that it's about the points that, that are on the court. Yes, of course, that's winning the game. But you also have to apply that to yourself, your personal goals. And what I tell him, in everything you do, as long as you're giving 100 percent of it, you got to give 100 percent of yourself in it and you you will cross the finish line and win that. Um, it sometimes may not be as simple or easy as you want it to be, but you have to you know press yourself for it. But, yes, we would love anyone who's interested to please give us, um, you know, their contact information and let us know how they can help. And we would definitely find something for them. All right. And uh, I'll offer Ryan to you because, you know, if you guys need a court jester, you know, if you need a comedian or something else, that's what Ryan's good for. So no, I'm not his I kid. But no, you know, Ryan, Ryan's a, he's a he can be a, a good resource as well because he tries to reach out on on my side of the house to try and help out as much as possible. But Ryan, Ryan's got a good head on his shoulders. If, if you need something, you know, possibly something answered. If it reach, you know, reach out to him on, on social media, which I'm pretty sure that everybody should have right now, which is the Nevsky when it comes to, I don't know why he doesn't ski. So I don't know why you put the Nevsky. It's a thing. I, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, no, you know, Ryan's been, he's been to college before he's dealt with radio before. And uh, so he, he's been around a little bit to, to figure out if, if things are going in the right, in the wrong direction. So, you know, he's always a good resource. But for you guys, for Patrick and Jeremiah, I know I, I can, he probably can hear me and, it, and his picture had disappeared there uh, for a second. But the, the same way, also let everybody know too about your social media handles. Therefore, people can start following you as well until that, you know, until your website comes live. Yes. Um, Team Global Select will be all of the handles also. So Instagram, Twitter, um, Jeremiah has already set up, I think most of those already. Um, so you can also go there. Yes, definitely. Uh, Team Global Select. Um, for Instagram, I, Jeremiah, I, I'll, I'll let you speak on that a little bit more. On the yes, sir. Media. Uh, we also, uh, the, the Instagram and the Twitter page is set up and we're also having the TikTok pages set up. So, uh, just trying to adapt to the new social media tools and just to get us out there, you know, it's never, never enough to not have your platform on different sites. So we're aiming at being on all platforms, even Facebook. I know a lot of people are starting to gravitate away from it but we want to get on there as well so we can get a, a broad viewership from everybody 
No, that's good because Ryan, I think, is the only guy that still owns a piece of MySpace. I don't know why. They, they've turned it into a storage place, but he, for some reason, he's the only one that's on MySpace. <laughs> See, now this is the only time I can ever rag on him because most of the time he always turns it on me, but that's okay. See, you got to wait for it, Ryan, just every once in a while. I know you like to pick on me a lot. This is my night to be able to do it with you, but let's, Ryan and I go back and uh, we like to have fun with each other. If we did an option, he wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be with him as well. Yes. I have to get one question into the two of them, and I'm going to pose this. You see where college athletics is headed. Oh, yeah. Okay, with the name, image, likeness. Uh, you know, Nick Saban came out the other day and said, we should get rid of the term student-athlete because there's no student-athletes anymore. Now, I beg to differ because some of the less fortunate who are not going to get a piece of the pie at NIL have something to... They have to have something to fall back on. Jeremiah, Patrick... You have to be living on the North Pole not to see what's happening. What do you feel about that? And I, it's an AAU program that again life skills. Well, if you can't make it, you've got to have something to ba have fall back on as far as a plan B in life. Yes, I 100% agree with that, and I think that's one of the one of the. One of the better things um, that I think that Jeremiah has planned for his team is that that um, when we first started talking about um, the concept of what he wanted to do with it, and that is that yes, you're going to have some players that are going to they're going to excel in the sport and and hopefully you know make money with the name, image, and likeness, or you know getting into the professional arena. But you're going to have realistically speaking, some that are not. And the goal is to build a team where it's not just about the sport itself, but also about where else you can go in your life. So to make sure even if you do, you know, get the, the money coming in from name and like this, you also know how to appropriately deposit that money or make the money work for you. You know, um, so we want to talk about some of those things to at least open the door so that it's more than just about the sport. But you understand that there are other concepts outside of this so that even if you make a whole lot of money, you need to be able to hold on to a whole lot of money mm -hmm. and not, you know, frivolously get rid of it. So we want to make sure that the skill set is, is beyond just the sport itself. And um, hopefully, you know, some of the players that that um, are on Jeremiah's team will have an amazing, um, uh, the, the amazing opportunity to benefit from some of these new, these newfound things that have just opened, you know, the doors have wide open for a lot of players now. And I love what you said about um, some of the, the players that are not uh, in a position, you know, may not be in the same position as others are. Well, our goal is to pull those into and see what we can do to help them you know get to another level for themselves because regardless of anything sport or not life will still go on for these for for, for those people we want to make sure that they have the tool set for that part of it too no listen fellas i appreciate you guys coming on tonight as we're heading here to the bottom of the hour break but i thank you both and by the way um ryan is the only one so you guys have aau he has AAA, which is the Athletic Association Anonymous. That means that anyone that ever played it had no idea who he was. That's the division he belongs to because I never knew he played either. But, you know, I just leave you guys with that one. <laughs> but anyways, thank you, Jeremiah. As always, listen, we're always in constant communication. Uh, we're going to be constantly communicating back and forth because not only am I going to pick up on where you're heading to athletically in your pro career, but also with global, uh, with Team Global Select. And the other thing I want to say, too, is uh, when that second jersey, not the first one, because the first one means a lot when it comes to building up the team. The second one, all right? Signed one so I can hang it here in the studio. So I know, like when Jeremiah first started, I was the guy that at least was able to talk to him before everything kicked off. And the same way with you, Patrick. So don't feel bad. Just both guys signing off. I'll frame it and have it right here in the studio. That sounds yes, sir. Well, Thank you for having us. No problem. All right, you guys. So uh, once again, everyone, you guys can go to Global Select, am I correct, dot com? Yes, and that's also Global Select on Instagram, on any of the social media platforms. All right. Don't forget. Team, Glo Team Global Select. 
Man, give him, give him a follow because again, Jeremiah, you guys can see how humble he is. I don't have to sell that one because you can see how humble he is. He just stays right where he is. He's focused upon and driven what he wants to do, and that's the most important part. So you guys hear a lot more of it, not only on this side of the house, but also on the Broad Street South side of the house where he originally where we met and we had uh, we had spoken. So the good thing is, the more things come around then the more at least you guys will be able to hear how this young company is going to continue to thrive and grow. So thank you guys so much. And for everyone else, we will be back here. Martinez Company, don't forget, starting first thing in the morning, you got Pete Shepard with the Pete Shepard Show from 7 to 10 a.m., followed by what's soon to be Defoe, and well, not Luby, but Defoe will be coming back. But in the meantime, we have the best of, and you guys will be hearing the best of of the Super Bowl throughout the week. So that'll go on to the end of this week. Then from 1 to 3, you have Jim Cozymore, Dave Benz, and Matt Fowler with the LFG Show, followed by Tony and Miss Robin on the Tony Bruno Show from 3 to 6 p.m. Myself, normally Rich Quinones, but Jeff, or Jeff, goodness, Ryan Neff. I was trying to say two names at once here. Ryan Neff filling in for Rich Quinones here at Martinez and Company. And right behind us is AJ Johnson and the Bleacher Brothers. So we'll be back. Hopefully the commercials will work here. I don't know. I might have to do what, what you said before, Ryan. Go to the Sakata yep. angle on this side. Gradual, congratulations, guys, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem.